Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. At the time of filming this, for just over two days left of the meteorological summer. And it has been a season of big contrasts this year. June brought record breaking warmth, July a lot more unsettled, and I think on the whole, August has been more typical. At least that's my perception. Well, how are things shaping up as we head into the early part of the meteorological autumn? As usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 29th. And at the outset, low pressure is dominant. It's centered just here, and it's bringing showers to the northern half of the United Kingdom. Also, for some patchy outbreaks of rain, pushing down across southern counties, and before they clear away, there could well be a few heavy bursts mixed in. As I run the animation, it stays quite changeable in the short term, and through Thursday, some heavy outbreaks of rain push across central and southern counties, but there is some uncertainty about the details associated with those, and I'll come back to them a little bit later. Continuing the animation, into the weekend and change happens. High pressure builds across the UK, it becomes much more settled, but low pressure isn't too far away to our south, and that does have the potential to put a fly into the ointment. On this computer model run, showery rain does affect seven counties at times through the early part of next week, but it really is uncertain about how influential the high pressure is going to be through this period and just what the extent of the rain risk is in Southern County. So I'll also have a look at that a little bit later as well, using the ensemble data. The jet stream and upper air temperature profile here, to begin with, the UK is just there. The jet stream still heading very close towards it, but watch what happens because it stays close to the UK to begin with, but then it finally migrates northwards as the high pressure build across the country. Lots taking place through the first week. It looks like high pressure will be having more influence through the latter part of the period, but just how settled it becomes is open to debate. Let's have a look at some of the temperatures down at the ground level associated with that GFS model run. Forecast maximums here, 15 GMT, Wednesday the 30th. A little bit on the cool side, the highest values there, 20 Celsius in eastern counties, lower as you go north and west. Moving forwards though to Saturday as the high pressure begins to build, it starts turning warmer, maybe 20, 21 Celsius in northeastern Scotland, similar there in Northern Ireland. The highest values though once more in southern and central counties up to 23 Celsius, so pleasant by this point. And overnight lows, well, not a great deal to worry about one way or the other at the moment. Not too warm, not too cold. Of course, we are getting to the time of year where the nights are rapidly lengthening and temperatures can start dipping a lot more noticeably. These are forecast minimums at 06 GMT on Monday, the 4th of September. So single figures there in the north and west, 10s, 11s, 12s in central and eastern England. So as I say, quite pleasant for sleeping, not particularly warm, not particularly cold. Forecast maximums on Monday afternoon with high pressure perhaps remaining dominant, so 21, 22, 23 in the south, maybe some patchy rain there showing up because those values in northern England are much lower, distinctly cool, but I wouldn't pay a great deal of attention to the details at this stage, as I always say higher values than in the north of England there being shown in Western Scotland and Northern Ireland between about 16 and 19 Celsius. So a lot will depend on the extent of the influence of high pressure through the second half of the first week. I mentioned heavy rain may be affecting southern and central counties on Thursday. These are forecast charts from the UKV model, so the high resolution one run by the Met Office. 06 GMT, 09, and 12 GMT going from left to right. The heaviest rain there being shown in southwestern Britain and Northern Ireland through the first half of the morning. As it pushes northeastwards, it becomes somewhat patchier, although there are still some heavy outbreaks being shown in the southeastern corner there at midday on Thursday. Generally, though, this 
indicates that the rain is going to be more fragmented as it pushes eastwards, northeastwards across the UK, and not perhaps as, as widespreadly intense as that GFS animation was indicating. So some uncertainty, as I say, about the details. There is that potential for heavy rain on Thursday in the south, but keep up to date with the short range forecast. It's another one of those events which is only two days ahead, but still the details are up for grabs. Now in more general terms, here are the accumulated rain totals for days 0 to 5 from the ECM and GFS models. ECM on the left showing the highest totals in the southwest and the far south. GFS a more nuanced distribution of rainfall. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, the values haven't really increased much across the United Kingdom on either of these, but it's worth drawing attention to the GFS chart on the right, because if you look down the English Channel in northern France, there is now green and blue shading, indicating large amounts of rain. So that is perilously close to southern counties of England, and it's all associated with that area of low pressure over continental Europe and just how far northwards it is going to be pushing. So, as we head towards the end of the first week, how do the deterministic models compare to each other? Are they broadly in agreement or have they gone off in different directions? Here is the GFS on Tuesday the 5th of September. It's the computer model run which the animations were based on. High pressure is building up from the southwest across the UK, but that area of low pressure is perilously close to our south. At the same time, the Canadian model has the low pressure a little bit further away, but conversely, the German icon has the high pressure centered further from the United Kingdom. Areas of low pressure, therefore, bring the potential for more changeable conditions. The European ECM, though, is close to the GFS and Canadian models, high pressure being more dominant, and so is the UK Met Office Global with the high pressure centered over the northern half of the UK. Low pressure probably at this point just far enough away not to be a huge factor. But taking all of those deterministics together, the conclusion is that dry weather is likely in the northern half of the UK at this point. Also quite likely in the south, but there there is a greater chance of that low pressure over continental Europe just beginning to push far enough northwards to bring showers or thundery downpours. Definitely something to keep an eye on as the time approaches. Now, how are things shaping up as we head into and through the second week? Of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and probabilities. I know I say that every week, but it really is important to emphasize the message. Starting with the 16-day GEFS ensemble plot for London. Air temperatures across the top. The thick black line is the third year average and most of the runs in the model are staying above it. So the signal is for above average temperatures at this level. So 1500 meters or so above our heads. In terms of the rain risk, well, there are a few spikes which continue to appear through the second week, but not very many of them. So although completely dry conditions are not being favored here, there should be a good deal of dry weather. But remember, with that area of low pressure just to our south, at least potentially just to our south, it does have the potential, especially through the early part of the second week, where there are one or two bigger spikes there, to bring heavy showers or downpours. The two meter temperature data table, well, it looks as though rather warm conditions are likely through much of the second week. The shading here, which dominates, is, is the category forecasting between 21 and 25 Celsius. Still a little bit of red. In fact, there's more red appearing than there was last week. Those runs going for 26 to 30. So even though we're heading into September, the data table this week is showing higher temperatures than it was last week. Some yellow there as well, runs going for between 16 and 20. And towards the very end there, perhaps a weak cooling trend is showing. Up to Manchester, the air temperature part of the plot, very similar to the London one. Most of the runs above the average, however, is quite a big spread there 
particularly later on, so some uncertainty about how things will be developing. Um, in the northwest of England, the number of rain spikes across the bottom isn't very large. On this one, there could be an uptick there towards the end, but it would also suggest at least a good deal of dry weather in this part of the United Kingdom. And if anything, with high pressure being centred over the northern half of the UK, at least at the start of this period, the chance of dry conditions, as I've been saying, is probably higher in the northern half of the United Kingdom than in the south. Two metre temperatures for Manchester, though, the same general pattern as on the London, London data table. It's probably a couple of degrees lower than London, but not at all bad for the early part of September. Up to Glasgow, the air temperature profile is closer to the average than it was on the London plot. The anomaly there isn't as big. Nonetheless, it is above the average with most of the runs there staying above that thick black line for much of the second week, the 30-year norm. Rainfall, not very many spikes across the bottom. Just at the end there, there is something of an upwards tick possibly becoming more changeable or unsettled, therefore, through the second half of the second week based on this. The two-metre temperatures for Glasgow, this shade in dominates this yellowy orange, so runs going for between 16 and 20 Celsius. The trend perhaps also here is downwards later on with more of the yellows appearing the 11s to 15s through the last few days, but not too bad in terms of temperatures for this part of the UK. The ECM rain probability chart, so these show the chance of five millimetres or more falling on each given day the first three days of week two are pointing towards the wettest conditions most likely to be in Western Scotland. So a relatively high chance there of over five millimetres of rain falling on each of those three days. So particularly in northwestern Scotland, the Isle of Skye, drier as you head southwards and eastwards. The same general pattern is shown on the days 11, 12 and 13 charts. But even at this stage, I wouldn't entirely discount the chance of low pressure over continental Europe being far enough north to lead to downpours in southern parts of the UK. The 10-day GEFS mean surface level pressure plot, so a snapshot for Friday the 8th of September, indicates a slack pressure gradient across the UK, northwestern Europe, though high pressure may be centred over Scandinavia, so once more a little bit to our north, and in turn that would suggest that the possibility at least of low pressure moving up from south to southwest cannot be discounted fully. The mean surface level pressure data table for York, so going forward through the second week, suggests that pressure will often be close to or a little bit above the 30-year average, 1011 to 1025 is indicated by the yellow shade in, 1026 to 1040 by the orange shade in, and at this time of the year the average is around 1015, 1060 millibars. So most of the runs in the yellow block are just a little bit above that norm. So to summarize week one, it's a changeable start, and on Thursday, there is a risk of heavy rain in southern and central counties. Beyond that, high pressure starts to build, so it turns more settled, especially in central and northern areas. Just that chance of things staying more mixed in the south due to low pressure being close by over continental Europe. Week two, generally quite settled with above average temperatures, and in the south it may become warm. The risk of rain is greatest in the northwest, although the chance of downpours in the south is not discounted. So, there we have it. It looks like the start of a meteorological autumn may well coincide with a period of more settled weather, at least for a time and at least in parts of the United Kingdom. But it's worth noting that at this time of the year, the computer models have more difficulties than usual in pinning down the medium term prospects. And that's due to the impact of ex hurricanes and tropical storms moving across the North Atlantic. The 
way that they interact with the jet stream is very difficult for the computer models to pin down. Nonetheless, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then as ever, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Remember as well that you can keep up to date with the day-to-day -day details by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks so much for watching now. Bye.